I'm delighted to be your host today and to welcome you to this discussion chaired by ASSYSTEM on international cooperation for the development of new build programs. I will be moderating uh, this session, which will be held in English. Uh, let's jump right into it and discuss international cooperation for the development of new build programs with our distinguished guests. And they are with us and I wish them welcome. Bonjour et bienvenue à Paris. Alors, is international cooperation a key success uh, factor for the development of new build programs? That is the question we're going to try to answer today. 57 nuclear reactors are under construction currently today in the world. Many of them are being developed through international corporations, which enable countries to join forces regarding funding and or technical and operational knowledge and resources. ITR is probably the most significant uh, example with 35 nations working together on that project. During this roundtable, we'll discuss both the advantages and the challenges of international cooperation to see if it is a key success factor in the development of new build projects today. We will also debate the features of the successful international cooperation regarding inter intercultural management, the use of new digital engineering tools, and so on. Furthermore, we will also examine how increasing international cooperation is reshaping the nuclear sector and the roles of its members, especially, especially the role and place of new national nuclear industries. Does the international cooperation mean more competition or more collaboration between the different actors? Can we promote international cooperation while protecting each national nuclear industry? That is a key question. We will discuss this with our panel and I will ask you to ask your questions. We have a number where you can send a text. That's the plus three three six four four six zero one five zero zero or you go on the website and you send your questions we will answer them at the end of this session so joining us on our panel uh, our chair stefano barbier ceo of a system france bonjour bonjour bernard bigot director general of the iter organization bonjour bienvenue good morning uh, Boris Sarsef, Global Business Development Deputy Director of Rosatom, welcome. You left the World Cup to be with us, we're honored. <laughs> and um, the General Manager of uh, MHI, Hiroshi Matsuda, welcome sir, good morning. And uh, for EDF, Vika Sasai Ramani, Senior VP Development of Nuclear uh, Projects and Engineering at EDF. Bonjour, bienvenue, monsieur. Welcome, gentlemen. So first thing first, let me give the floor to the chair of this discussion, Stefano Barbier, CEO of ASSYSTEM. So a few words to uh, introduce this uh, round table. Uh, I think that uh, everybody in, uh, in, in that meeting room uh, who, who is filling up uh, uh, slowly uh, this morning, um, nuclear used to be developed by, uh, as a national technology, as a national industry for uh, almost, uh, I mean, uh, the, the 50 uh, past years. Um, few, very, I mean, in, in few times, in few cases, um, technology transfer to countries eager to develop their own nuclear industry was the core of the international cooperation. Uh, therefore, it was a reserved matter for, of uh, the government, um, and, and the cooperation in nuclear was going through mainly bilateral agreements. For about 10 years now, uh, we see more and more countries um, yearning to access nuclear power generation uh, for independence, cost stability, CO2 reduction emission uh, purposes. And anyway, although all of those countries do not intend to transfer technology, all of those countries, almost all of those countries, intend to involve their own industrial supply chain in those projects, such as it was the case, by the way, in the uh, oil and gas industry in the, in the two last decades. On top of that, cost of the research and development, the increasing number of uh, intended projects worldwide, the growing difficulty to fund multi-billions projects 
in nuclear, but not only in nuclear, in all the infrastructure projects worldwide, make more and more difficult to execute projects alone. So that draws now most of the big nuclear industry worldwide. I mean, the, the, the French, the, the Russian, the Korean, the Japanese, uh, the US one, and probably tomorrow, as we all know, the Chinese and the Indian one, to, to enhance collaboration and cooperation, especially to address the project abroad. It's a different matter as soon as we talk about domestic project, but as soon as we, uh, we envisage to uh, develop projects out of the borders, out of the country, then it starts to be a must to consider cooperation with the, with the other ones. Why? Because in fact, the, first of all, the, the, the failure of one project worldwide could damage, as at least is a threat for all the nuclear industry, for the entire nuclear industry. So nobody has any interest to see any project, even driven by some competitors, failing. In the meantime, the potential significant prospects are not so, so many. I mean, the, the number of countries able to develop significant nuclear projects, having the, the, the capability to fund and to support, to bear uh, nuclear projects with their industrial supply chain, uh, is not so numerous. It, it means that still the competition is quite fierce between the nuclear, the different nuclear industry I was mentioning before. Meaning that at the same time, all the industries represented by some of the gentlemen, I mean, at, at, the, at this panel, uh, are in, at, the both, at the same time in both situations to, first of all, compete together and at the same time cooperate together. I'm sure that for some of the people in, uh, in the meeting room, I mean, some of the people in that room uh, do not belong to, uh, to Framatome, to, uh, to, our, uh, to uh, EDF, to uh, MHI or to uh, Rosatom, but to uh, smaller companies, to small and medium uh, enterprise. For those companies, I mean, does it make sense to consider to work abroad with other nuclear filiers? How is it possible? To what extent is it possible? To what extent is it, it, it is allowed? Is a, is a cruel question that everybody has to face right now to keep on developing, to keep on growing our companies, and at the same time, uh, or in, in some cases, even to survive, in fact. And so the aim of the roundtable today is to try to figure out, at least to start to figure out some answers to uh, those questions. Uh, how can I collaborate with the other ones? And in the meantime, keep, uh, keep my technology, keep my IP, and protect my key uh, business distinctive factors. This is the, point, this is the target of the, of the round table. Estelle, the floor is yours. Merci. So we're going to jump right into a collaboration versus competition. Is it compatible? Uh, let's start with uh, ITER. How does your company approach international cooperation? Monsieur Bigot. Uh, as you know, we are in charge of it a works. very challenging project. And indeed, it is a prerequisite to have international cooperation. Uh, no country, whatever powerful it could be, could deliver the various technology we need uh, on a reasonable time uh, and uh, able to comply with our expectation. And second is, as you know, a technology for the future. And the le lesson learned from the previous okay, nuclear development has been such that all the country which uh, consider this technology as a potential uh, breakthrough for their uh, energy supply in the future understand that it is better now to decide jointly on the standard, on the way to proceed. In such a way, tomorrow, it will be both competition but also collaboration. So it's a very good example from my point of view uh, to consider uh, the best way to organize at the world size, at the world level, in order to be able to deliver properly for the future. Um, Boris, how does your company see international cooperation? First of all, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and uh, thank you for our system to having me here. And uh, our international cooperation um, we have been doing it the uh, last 10 years, uh, not only inside our country, but in our foreign project. And that is why 
We see that international cooperation is a, a key point of the future success, and the success not only for us as a vendors. This is a success for, first of all, for our customers, because we suggest not only the source of energy, the clean energy, the cheap energy, we suggest uh, the new lifestyle. This is a lifestyle on the best technological decisions of the new development for the country and so on. And do it being alone, I think it's impossible to do, especially when you have a project in the different countries, with different nations, with different traditions and so on. That is why we do it. We have the partners, we have the suppliers, we have a special forms for our suppliers, how to be more success with us and uh, be success in our joint operation. That is why we are doing it and uh, we see the future only to be together. MHI, how does it work? It's working. Working? Yes. Okay. So thank you very much for uh, giving us this uh, important opportunity. Uh, regarding international cooperation, we MHI uh, thinks it's very important under the current nuclear uh, circumstances. Uh, as you know, uh, we invested uh, from Atom uh, with uh, a system and also Orano. Uh, this is why, uh, this, the reason is that we would like to strengthen the relationship, a cooperation uh, with the French nuclear industry. Uh, we are working on the uh, Turkish project uh, with uh, uh, EDF and from Atom. Or uh, we developed Atomia with the French nuclear industry. We work for ITA project as one of the suppliers. So we are making uh, lots of international cooperation now. Uh, I think that uh, there are three merits or benefits for international cooperation. One is the technology. If you work with uh, uh, your partner, other countries, uh, co uh, companies, uh, you can strengthen uh, your technology or you can make your reactor more uh, safer than uh, the previous one. So from the viewpoint of technology, it's a, it has a merit. Another point, resources. Uh, you need lots of, I can say, financing resources, uh, human resources, manufacturing resources uh, for the big project. And uh, uh, if you work with uh, other countries, uh, you can share that kind of uh, load or burden with your partner. A third point, risk. So as you know, uh, if you see the overseas project, there are lots of uh, cost overrun or uh, delay in schedule. But if we are work with your uh, uh, partner, uh, I can say you can uh, share this risk or you can bring, uh, I can say by bringing the technology or expertise or knowledge, you can mitigate this kind of a risk. So these three is, a, I think, benefit for the international cooperation. In which I would like to, I can say, contribute to the low carbon society uh, by providing safer or more reliable uh, nuclear technology through international cooperation. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur Matsuda. Let's hear from EDF. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Thank you, Stefan, for uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to share some views on this very important topic indeed. Um, a lot has been already said, so I'll try to be short, brief, and s not summarize, but give some of our, share some of our experience. Factually, um, international cooperation is part of EDF's DNA. It's been at the genesis of the French nuclear fleet. Um, it is currently uh, 30 years, more than 30 years, that we've been cooperating with China and uh, supported China in developing its own fleet. Uh, we've been there for South Africa uh, at Coburg, which is a, a twin or a sister power plant of uh, Bugé. Um, and today, this continues. This continues at Taishan, the first TPRs, uh, which will be uh, connected to the grid. Uh, this continues in Hinkley Point C, where our Chinese partners are investing together with us. Uh, and this will continue, uh, we uh, expect so, in India, uh, where uh, we will uh, support uh, our Indian partners and PCIL to uh, develop EPRs as well. Um, I believe that, uh, we believe, I think, at EDF, that success of international cooperation has to be built at three levels. Level one is country to country. There's got to be a common vision. 
there's got to be a common vision for such a corporation to work. In the 70s, 80s, 90s, it was more about independence of energy independence and security of supply. Today, when it's about nuclear, it's more about uh, still energy independence and security of, of supply, but all the more um, low carbon uh, yeah. energy generation. And this is added in the, in the, in the, in the vision. And, and those visions have to be shared. Typically, when uh, French President Macron and uh, Prime Minister Modi agree to move forward on a JTAPO project, they want to push for uh, a low carbon energy mix. The second level, uh, important, we're very important to make this to, 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 to ensure success of uh, such cooperation, is collaboration on technology. Um, we project ourselves as operators in the very long term, uh, and uh, we have to ensure, as most of the people around this table, that we provide sufficient support to our partners, customers, uh, to get the knowledge so that they can safely operate nuclear power plants. And nuclear power plants today, uh, it's about 60 years or more of operation. It's significant responsibility, and this requires significant transfer of knowledge to ensure uh, this. And this is a, a very important point for all of us. The final one is, uh, uh, when we look at it, beyond the technology, it's about the project itself. The project itself is in current uh, uh, Configuration is very adherent to the country, to the country regulation, its environment, its ecosystem. Um, a lot of the project is done on site. I mean, erection, a lot of work related to project is on site delivery. This requires a, uh, a good uh, uh, synergies between uh, the exporting industry and uh, the uh, integrating industry. I would say there's a local supply chain. So that requires a lot of work. Uh, we ensure at EDF that uh, we make those three levels work very well and very much aligned because this is the backbone of the success of uh, international cooperation in, su in such projects. To Monsieur Ramani, I hear you, you're enthusiastic, all of you are. So international cooperation is blossoming, you're all happy and dandy, yet I understand that you are competitors though. So how do you deal with competition uh, in your relationships? Uh, what makes you decide to compete? or to work together, what are the deciding factors for you? Um, the first and foremost important thing is uh, that we shape a project according to its environment. And um, so it's all on a country to country basis. Um, in some countries, um, the discussions, and we were talking, I was talking about the three levels. Sometimes it's bilateral discussions that uh, get us to uh, uh, a real project in India currently. It's about it's a bilateral discussion. Taishan uh, is the result of a bilateral discussion, essentially. So competition is not everywhere. Um, when th where there is competition, uh, sometimes uh, well the the environment is such that the leader is naturally you know assigned or identified and. Uh, so it is our uh, <laughs> ability to be smart, to uh, follow the right leader, uh, so that effectively we can be collectively successful where it needs to be. There, at the end of the day, there are only very few places where competition is there. And where it is the case, we are very happy to compete and demonstrate uh, our capabilities. At the end of the day, it's also about uh, an industry which is able to uh, be uh, performing and uh, drive uh, costs down. To, to markets where this is currently happening I, in Saudi Arabia. I think it's a very open and competi competitive process. And probably if Czech Republic launches a process soon, it will be uh, also competitive. Um, it depends on the region then. So what about uh, MHI, Mr. Matsuda? What makes you decide to compete or to work together? It's the same question. Uh, uh, Why well, uh, you cooperate is that, you know, uh, as I mentioned, there are three merits uh, for international cooperation. And the uh, benefit or merit is bigger than the, I guess, uh, the disadvantage uh, you will cooperate. Uh, for example, we, as uh, I explained, we are closely working with the uh, French nuclear industry uh, for Atomea now. But, uh, you know, uh, we are competing, unfortunately, uh, with Framatom to supply the st replacement steam generators for EDF, for example. That's, uh, I can say, life. And, uh, you know, uh, 
Uh, another example is that uh, we, uh, other than the Atomia, uh, we are working with the French nuclear industry in the D and D uh, dismantling and decommissioning area recently, uh, because there are lots of uh, reactors to be D and D in Japan, uh, etc. Uh, so uh, we are working together uh, for this area. Of course, you have to take care of the uh, competition rule. Uh, uh, if you simultaneously uh, compete and cooperate. However, uh, uh, now uh, you need uh, international cooperation. And uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, that I think that. That's yeah. Um, regarding Rosatom, how do you approach that, Boris? What makes you switch from competition to cooperation? Uh, I can say that uh, the competition are making us stronger, first of all. And living without competition, it means uh, what will you do tomorrow, with whom you compare your activities and so on. And um, that is why it's not bad. But at the same time, um, we need to understand what is more profitable, more important, especially for our customer, the competition or cooperation. And um, I can give you... Uh, short examples that, for example, years ago, um, the French nuclear industry started with supply uh, with us of some INC parts to nuclear power plant. And today, there may be up to 1 billion euros uh, of the French technology in each Rosatom nuclear power unit. It means that, based on the previous competition, we get the reliable partner, the reliable suppliers, and these suppliers in the future, we are absolutely sure, will be our partners. It means from project to project we will be together and can do our uh, job best for our customer, for the countries. That is why it's the way, how it depends on the situation maybe, where to compete, where to cooperate. But the most, I think, profitable way today is the cooperation. I can underline that uh, Having today 35 units in our portfolio in the different countries, it's more profitable, more beneficial for us and for all our partners to be to together and find the right ways for cooperation. Thank you, Boris. So money talks. We understand it makes business sense to cooperate. Uh, let me turn to ITER. It's the flagship project of international cooperation. Uh, Mr. Bigot, your experience is quite unique. Uh, technology is not the only element of international cooperation. It also pertains to other parts of the supply chain and to the financing of the project. Can you talk about it with us? Yes, maybe I just want to say a few words on competition and collaboration. Sure. Uh, when you are a client with us uh, now, we want to be sure that we have enough good companies to deliver. So we want to maintain a vivid uh, pool, pool of good uh, competitors, and if they are to be competitors, they have also to collaborate. So they could mutualize some which could be common, and uh, each of them could make some differentiation uh, depending on their history and maybe their previous experience. So for me, it's very, very important on this matter. Now, let's come to your point. Uh, a project like ITER is so large that uh, really we need to have a long-term vision, associating all the partners in the main interest of the project and build trust for them that their investment will be worthwhile. So we need full transparency on the way we proceed uh, and the mutual trust in such a way that they understand clearly what are our expectations, how they could prepare themselves, and they are secure enough that we would get the proper financing in order to deliver on time. And I am very pleased to say that uh, we have seven large partners, as you know, uh, 35 different countries, and uh, so far each of them fully understand what would be the benefit to have a share project with a clear, okay, long-term financial perspective in such a way that everybody feels comfortable with their own investment. But regarding financing, it is key to work together. Uh, Stefan mentioned it. ITER is also a great project regarding that. You have a good experience in that regard. 
Yes, as I said, uh, from the very beginning, we have a, the ITER agreement. All the partners have decided okay, on their share. All the non-European country is 9%. Europe, because it is in Europe, is 45%. It's time, 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 uh, five times more. And it is a rule. Everybody understands it is the best benefit to have clear rules and to stick with this rule up to the end. Um, let's talk about um, local content for new projects. EDF, you're not working in India, you mentioned it, and you're building an international engineering platform. Can you talk about it with us? Sure, very happy to. Maybe first of all, a few words about the project itself. So what we are aiming to do is, uh, is a six EPR project uh, at a site called Jaitapur. It eventually, it will become the biggest nuclear power plant in the world. Um, the objective uh, has been set by Prime Minister Modi and President Macron last March uh, to start work on site in 2019. So, Tomorrow? This is tomorrow. By nuclear standards, this is definitely tomorrow. Actually, it's in one hour, I would say. <laughs> or the uh, day before. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, when you look at the size of this project, the challenge related to it, um, and India wants to do it fast, it requires a s significant amount of resources and the best resources, the most competent resources we need so to, to make sure that effectively we can reduce risk and deliver uh, to uh, uh, India's expectation and with a, you know, appropriate economic viability for the project overall. So yes, we are looking at uh, many solutions to uh, reduce the project risk. One of these um, is localization, thanks to, uh, and we have the benefit of uh, India having a very strong uh, industry, uh, supply chain, and it's part of uh, those countries which have very, very good engineering uh, resources. And so the idea is to set up effectively a platform very close to uh, uh, our uh, customer and partner and PCIL uh, in Mumbai, together with partners, so a system is, uh, is, is part of it, part of this uh, adventure, um, with the objective to perform from India, very close to the project itself and to the partner itself, um, all the uh, engineering work and the detailed engineering work. Um, so this is beneficial for uh, India, of course, because uh, as part of this, uh, we can do quite a lot of uh, transfer of uh, know-how. This is beneficial for uh, us, of course, because uh, we create uh, a new environment and new resources maybe for future projects elsewhere. Uh, and of course, uh, this is good for our partners and we bring together with us the uh, French industry and we also uh, create uh, a new ecosystem in India for EPR. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, this is something which is uh, very strong and brings a lot of benefits for all of us. Thank you. Maybe to add something to... Um to the words of uh, of Akis. Uh, in that case, I mean our, our involvement in uh, the involvement of a system in that project um, brings as well some uh, some benefits to uh, to Rosatom because Rosatom has as well ongoing projects in uh, in India. Uh, in that case, uh, all of the projects are the the uh, the, the fruition of uh, bilateral uh, relationship between countries. So it means that the two projects are not in direct competition. I mean. Uh, there is uh, not one project that will be awarded and not the other one. I mean, everything is possible for everybody. And uh, in that case, uh, Rosatom and, uh, and EDF share partly the same supply chain as, for example, I mean, uh, some foreseen uh, partners on that project are as well partners of, uh, of, uh, of uh, EDF and of, uh, of Rosatom. So in that case, in fact, the collaboration, I mean, the, the, the efforts endeavored by uh, uh, one of them uh, will bring capabilities, additional capabilities for the other one to develop its own project. Uh, interesting. Rosatom, do you want to highlight some of your projects? I mean, EDF has shown. Um, let me give a short maybe example, but very important in our cooperation with EDF and uh, French industry. It is a lifetime extension in Bulgaria. We did it together in consortium with EDF, Rosenergat, and Rosatom Service, it's our subsidiaries companies. 
plus the engineering uh, company from Bulgaria, uh, subcontractors, and our customer was our partner, the Bulgarian industry, and uh, we realized this project together two months ahead of time schedule. And it's a very successful project for us. And they know that one of the subcontractors for EDF was a system. And we have done very good this job. We did it together. And I'm absolutely sure we will continue our cooperation based on our experience. And uh, I can say honestly that uh, the voices from our customer was very happy. Because today the main challenges for nuclear industry to realize our project on budget and time schedule. That is very important, and we have done it. So time is the essence, budget as well. Uh, we understand that international cooperation can work with the right tools. Now, how do you manage it? That's important. What sort of structural changes within your organizations are called for to reap all the benefits of international co cooperation? We touched on contracts. It is key. What sort of organization do you need to set up? What are the challenges that you are to address regarding intercultural barriers, for example? Let me start with MHI, Mr. Matsuda. Uh, okay. <coughs> Uh, I think that uh, I th my personal idea is that uh, the culture of France and Japan is relatively uh, similar. And even so, uh, there is a difference. Uh, let me uh, give the example of Atomea. So uh, there is a difference. So I can say uh, regarding the management, uh, both sides, French side and Japanese side, uh, dispatch the management. Employees also uh, dispatched by both sides. Uh, business process in the company uh, is uh, clarified and shared. Uh, mission vision also established together and shared. So this kind of, uh, I can say, uh, activities uh, can cope with the uh, difference in culture. Uh, another point, uh, the marketing of Atome activity is now uh, led by parent companies, EDF and MHA. Uh, we are equal partners, but that does not, does not necessarily mean that every activity will be shared by both parties. For example, marketing, uh, we MHI is located in Asian country, Asia, so we, we are very good at Asian markets. Uh, I think that if you see the uh, Eastern Europe, for example, uh, EDF may uh, be very good at that market. So even uh, we will share uh, that kind of uh, activities. So, Again, you, yep. so, so you need to work on the process, be clear on the mission, and then um, really push on each other's natural advantages yes, to yes. make it work together. Yes, yes. Um, let That's me turn to Mr. Bigot. How, how do, you, do you work with that? Okay, it's a very big challenge for us Indeed. because, as you know, we try to get the best of the 35 different countries. So the way we proceed is uh, quite clear. First. As you know, a project as ITER is a long-term project. It's not just for a few months or even a year. It's some of our contracts are for five years, even 10 years. So the best is to build up what we call a joint venture, a consortium, where the different partners agree to share their resources under a clear governance, clear commitment to avoid any uh, Okay, conflict of interest, and uh, we deal directly with this uh, joint venture of consortium. And we have very um, many, many examples. It works very fine on, on this point. Last uh, comment I would like to do is the following. Any nuclear plant is in a country. So every supplier knows they have to comply with the local regulation. Okay, the nuclear regulators are the one which will define, I will say, the rules. And so all the partners join their effort to fit within this rule, and it is a good way to uh, consolidate this consortium. Uh, from our point, what the consortium would like is to have in front of this consortium uh, an owner which is able to have a direct discussion globally with this uh, okay, 
a joint venture leadership in such a way that we don't see any of the okay, uh, participating company individually. We see the global project together. Uh, Boris? What we are doing now uh, to manage our supply chain or our cooperation international. I can say that we are very interested to get the best suppliers from the whole world to our projects and the projects everywhere. It doesn't matter in Europe, in the Asia or everywhere. What we are doing, uh, for example, uh, we have our uh, own event uh, for suppliers, the Atomics, the last uh, was in Budapest, where we clarified and informed uh, the audience about our approaches, about our projects, about our conditions, how to uh, realize their task uh, to work with us, and so on. And now our new, and we, uh, by the way, we do it uh, every year, every year, and sometimes in the different countries. In Europe, it is I would say the regular event, and it's very comfortable for our potential suppliers to get the additional information uh, how to become our supplier. But our new approaches are to change the situation from supplier to partner. It's more, it's more beneficial for each of us because for our supplier, we are ready to uh, pay our time for education, for uh, some explanation, uh, ex not expl clarification of our conditions. It means that for the future projects, it's easier to work together. It means that we had experience. It means that we absolutely sure will get the uh, decreasing costs. And uh, the most important to get uh, the right time schedule on this. That is why changing today the form of from supplier to the partner. It's our new approach and we see it's uh, the main future of our cooperation. Thank and you. Sorry. We do maximum to inform our potential partners about it. Right, so com communication uh, is key uh, as well from uh, this sort of change from switching from uh, suppliers to partners that's uh, built cultural change within your company uh, at Rosatom. So, Cooperation versus competition, the issue could be conflicts of interests. Uh, we haven't touched on it yet. Uh, Stefan, isn't it a problem for your French clients that you go and work with other foreign nuclear industries? Could it be one? Maybe before, uh, just before, a few words, be, uh, few words before answering a question about competition and cooperation. Um, in our field, I mean, in, in engineering field, we are very used to that kind of situation. I mean, on major projects, such as I mean, most of the ones, for example, we have with uh, ITER or with, uh, with EDF, um, we are always partnering with competitors. I see people in, uh, in the meeting room from uh, Wood Group or Atkins, uh, they are both our best or worst competitors and our best partners, in fact. They're frenemies. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and frankly speaking, the best way to, to have uh, good cooperators is first of all to enter in a very tight competition with them. Because, I mean, to make cooperation working, you need to build trust and respect. How can you build trust and respect if you don't play equal to equal? And the best way to play equal to equal is to demonstrate on the market, sales-wise, delivery-wise, that you are there. So. I think it's, it's, I mean, we are very used to in the uh, engineering field. I mean, we are not always used to in, uh, in, uh, in the nuclear industry. Then how to deal with uh, this situation where time to time you have to be competitor and time to time you have to, uh, to, to cooperate. Um, I mean, the first thing is that, um, of course, uh, we, we are part, I mean, we, we, um, we, we drag, we, we pull out all our knowledge from the French nuclear industry. So it's, obvious that as soon as France push an offer on the market on some major program, we are part of the French supply chain and of none else. But the reality is that France cannot, I mean EDF, 
cannot be everywhere, uh, cannot afford to be everywhere. A and then, and in some cases, as the, the example we mentioned regarding, in fact, India, in India there is no competition. It's a bilateral uh, project. So you have the entire freedom to be part of one, two, three different projects without any conflict of interest. So it's basically a case-by-case -case analysis that uh, lead us to uh, um, propose ourselves as a partner of uh, MHI, or of Rosatom, or of EDF, uh, I mean, according, I mean, accordingly, in fact, depending on upon the, the, the project. Um, do you want to, to talk about um, how you acquire new expertise that eventually will benefit the French sector uh, as yeah, well? Yeah, ma maybe, I mean, uh, what I, c I could add uh, uh, regarding this, this point is that, of course, all the uh, experience we retrieve from projects led with uh, one or other uh, um, industry uh, nuclear leader, uh, the, the Japanese, I mean the, 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 the Russian, the Koreans, um, of course, it is uh, an additional knowledge and know-how we have to support the, 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 the French nuclear industry and vice versa to some extent. I mean, for example, I mean, in, in uh, working with Rosatom, uh, we, we, um, we learn a lot about uh, digital engineering. I mean, it, which is not in the mindset of uh, uh, everybody probably in that meeting room that uh, we, we do not, frankly speaking, sorry for that, uh, Boris, but I was not imagining before working with Rosatom that uh, Rosatom was uh, maybe uh, more advanced than uh, others in uh, digital engineering in nuclear field. Yeah, for me, it was not obvious. Then we, we, we learn a lot of things, and we deal now with some project for CAA uh, using, in fact, the understanding we have of the way we can use digital tools to uh, reduce, in fact, the, the, uh, the, the number of hours uh, to, to develop a, a, a new uh, a classified uh, nuclear installation. So it's a great learning curve for each and every uh, player. Thank you, gentlemen. That was a lovely conversation. Now it's your turn, members of the audience. I'm going to ask your questions when they appear on the screen, um, if we have any. Do we? Regarding trust and transparency, how can digital tools help? You touched on it, uh, Stefan. Uh, Boris, since, you know, Stefan helped you, you know, and said that you're that good in that regard. Let's talk about digital tools. How do they help? How do they help? I think uh, that giving you an example, it's more understandable how it works. Um, our example that uh, during our constructing of a nuclear power plant in Rostov, of course, inside Russia, uh, we had a eight months delay to the supply of uh, reactor pressure vessel. It means, in our regular practice, that the next stage will be with the same delay. It means the delay of the final constructed point of uh, our power plant. But using our uh, special PLM multi-D system, uh, we realized this task uh, doing simultaneously the different uh, work inside, um, making the analysis of the documents together with our regulator, modeling some kind of processes for constructing, and as a result, we constructed it on time. It's a short, maybe, example with, uh, I would say, uh, particular d details, but it is a fact that uh, using the digital instruments, it helps you to do your job well. And the digital instruments is a, a huge definition, I think, especially today. Mm, in Since our digital yeah, is everywhere. <laughs> because we create it every day, every day. The new branches, the new kind of uh, efficiency and so on. Monsieur Bigot. Yes, for us it's absolutely critical. As you know, we are working with uh, companies which are on uh, all the continent and we want on real time to be able to share all uh, the data, the challenge, and the okay solution. Without the digital tool to have a okay, um, uh, common 
data uh, uh, information uh, tools, we will not be able to work together. Uh, and I am very pleased to say that uh, all the partners have understand that we have a, a common database uh, every day. It is refreshed. Everybody has to access to it. And uh, it is critical to maintain the trust that the other comply with their commitment, that uh, we are still on time, uh, and uh, for managing uh, the multiple interface which are between all the suppliers and uh, the, the organization. And as you know, we have what we call the domestic agencies, which are the one which uh, pass the contract on our behalf. Uh, the digital tool is absolutely uh, critical and uh, without uh, the development we, we had in the very recent years, uh, I'm sure you, you, we would have failed. Monsieur Ramani, ensuite Monsieur Barbier. Just maybe to, to add beyond uh, the project aspects uh, for which you have uh, very well developed and, uh, and you as well, I think also uh, when we think about project development as operators, we do project ourselves in operations and today with the new tools, with the new digital tools, we can project already from the inception of a project into the operations. And typically, project lifecycle management tools, digital tools, which allow you to understand what is the status of different components during the life of the operation. Where is it? It provides also significant uh, um, transparency, visibility for the operator, for the safety authority, and also as a result, you know, you can give much more visibility to when you will run maybe uh, another uh, uh, supply uh, process, uh, procurement process to replace uh, some of the components. And all this allows basically increased safety, increased performance, and increased visibility uh, overall. Stéphane? Uh, maybe, I mean, re regarding both digital and something we did not address before, but uh, which is uh, clearly, I mean, the, the, uh, the main hurdle to, uh, to, to collaborate between, uh, between nations and between supply chain. And now it's, uh, we, we, we talked about the, the, um, the possibility to collaborate from one industry to uh, another one. But clearly, if the, the companies, the, the firms, are not able to address the different standards you have in the nuclear industry, which are different in, uh, in France, in Russia, and uh, in the uh, US or in the rest of the world, uh, and if you are not able to share data, then it makes absolutely impossible the collaboration. Uh, and uh, I think that everybody has to be aware that to be able to uh, cope with different standards and to be able to share data uh, at the same time with EDF and Rosatom, it means it requests some basic investment that has to be done before contemplating any collaboration. Meaning that the digital tools create a level playing field. I mean, uh, digital tools, uh, we, we, uh, we, okay. we knew that in uh, other industries. I mean, as soon as you go to uh, for digital tool, you, you, you know that you will invest a couple of millions, or um, I mean, for a small company, a couple of tens of millions for some of the ones. So, so uh, it's, a, it's a real decision that has to be made uh, going to uh, international collaboration to be sure that you are, you are keen to invest both in coping with new standards, with new regulation, and uh, at the same time to invest in uh, data equipment, whatever it is, uh, enabling you, in fact, to co actually collaborate. But be beyond the fact that uh, this uh, digital tool is critical for to build trust among the shareholders, uh, it is critical also from my point of view to, to, to build the trust with the public opinion. As you know, nuclear plants, safety first. Safety. And perception is key. Yes. And so I am very frank with you. When we start ITER, we don't communicate so much. We were a little bit shy in some way because we were first of a kind. There was some difficulty and so. When I came in, I say we have to change completely okay, the paradigm. Now we have to be fully open in order to try to build trust by the decision makers, by uh, okay, the public opinion, and even by the potential uh, suppliers. They see, they could see on real time how the works is moving, okay, and uh, an image 
is much better than any comment, as you know. So from my point of view, in the nuclear industry, we need to use as much as we can this digital tool to share fully transparent, in full transparency our activities in order to be sure that uh, the public opinion trusts us in our capacity to deliver. Mr. Matsuda, do you want to comment as well? Uh, why uh, international cooperation was difficult in the past is that the geolo geological difference and uh, time difference. Uh, for example, we, when we had a conference call with the EDF, uh, that should be uh, like say, evening in Japanese time and uh, morning in the French time. <laughs> if you use, uh, use uh, digital tools, you don't take uh, need to think about the hackers like where you are or when uh, you you will like say, say something. Uh, so I think that uh, now uh, digital tool is a fundamental tool for the international cooperation. Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Masuda. Another question, the last one before we go. If there is any. Maybe. How do you approach local content and capacity building for newcomers in the industry? Uh, Monsieur Ramani, you touched on it when you mentioned India. Uh, how do you approach it? You know, we discussed different standards, um, sharing knowledge, sharing capacity, yet being able to differentiate your offer. How do you deal with that? And so safety, in a, in a, in obviously. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, um, in a newcomer country, so basically, uh, I think uh, it was a very uh, self-evident in, in all what we discussed. Uh, when we talk about nuclear, it's about very long-term partnership. Very long-term partnership, and I think I mentioned at the very beginning, we look at it when we think about it at EDF at three levels, country to country, technology, and project and industry. Um, so effectively, it's about connecting all these three levels, and the industries have to be connected. So first of all, what we do, uh, uh, we, we have our own methodology, it's now proven, because we tried it in, we did it in China, we did it in uh, South Africa. Uh, we make our own assessment of the local industry, uh, its capabilities, its ability to uh, take on uh, nuclear and to be plugged into nuclear challenges. Um, then, of course, it's about identifying those players who are ready to make significant investments. It's also a lot about significant investments uh, to get to uh, the level of requirement uh, of nuclear, which is uh, advanced technology, very high standards, uh, with uh, significant requirements raised by uh, safety authorities, especially uh, in our current world. So. Basically, we have to uh, support also uh, the key partners and the, 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 the that we can identify uh, to come up with uh, uh, the level that is required to work with us. Eventually, that pays off because um, uh, it is. We l talked a lot about mutual benefit, and usually that is not a one-off. Then they can come with us on other projects in other international markets, or sometimes even in our domestic markets. So. Um, uh, very clearly, uh, we have a clear methodology to do that, to perform that, and uh, this is something we offer to uh, uh, all our uh, partners, uh, including in newcomer countries. So you are indeed involved in capacity building. Uh, we are actually reaching the end of this session. I want to thank you, gentlemen, uh, for this discussion and sharing your insights. Thank you so much. I will leave the final words to our host, Stefan. A uh, word of conclusion? Well, Cl clearly, it looks that um, uh, there is no doubt that uh, uh, international collaboration now it, it, it's a must. Uh, I, I understand as well from the different ex uh, d discussions and, uh, and says that uh, uh, digital. I mean, uh, if, if there was one question uh, with digital, uh, and I think uh, six answers. Uh, so, so uh, it, it means that Maybe it the next topic. Yeah, the next it, it looks question. like that uh, it's uh, crucial. Uh, now, element to uh, to to uh, to uh, enable uh, international collaboration. Uh, I, I think that uh, what was uh, the last words of uh, Vakis uh, and what has been said before by uh, by, by uh, uh, Mr. Bigot is that um, definitely. I mean, you 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 cannot make it make it small. I mean, 
uh, it, uh, coping with standards, making the effort to uh, go in uh, different countries, uh, investing in the digital tools required to be uh, able now to, to, um, to develop and to deliver our nuclear, nuclear programs, uh, make I mean, uh, the, the thing difficult if you are not able and if you are not keen to invest since the very beginning. So saying that, it's difficult to, to make it small. So if you want to go international, and to collaborate with the different nuclear industry, you, you, you have you to go. I mean, you need the it's muscles. a real decision. You it's a real the decision. Muscles, yeah. Then I would just uh, seize the uh, opportunity to, to, to get the mic to, to um, just to, uh, to say that um, uh, right now, I mean, uh, when I, I consider the, the WNE this year, it looks that uh, nuclear industry uh, shows more muscle than, than in the past, which is good. And there are just uh, one message to, uh, to the audience. Uh, which is that uh, I, I think we don't have to be shy uh, about uh, being uh, involved in, uh, in your nuclear business. I mean, we can be proud in uh, most of the uh, nuclear industry uh, to uh, both the, the, the safety and the performance of the nuclear power station. And I, I just encourage everybody to be as objective defending the nuclear industry as the opponent of nuclear are objective to try to stop it. Uh, so, uh, so this is my uh, my last word, and uh, I just uh, want to uh, thank uh, all the audience to uh, to, to come to uh, to listen to the panel, and uh, as well to encourage the people to to go to the different booth of uh, of MHI, of uh, of Rosatom, of uh, EDF, uh, to uh, to keep on discussing about this topic, and in case uh, some people want to make some business with the different nuclear industries. Thank you. Monsieur Barbier, Monsieur Matsuda, Monsieur Arsiv, Monsieur Ramani, Monsieur Bigot, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you.